On today's show, we are asking you to rethink what your business is really for. Do you own a small business or do you make income on a regular basis? We got a really good topic ahead and we're gonna talk about making sure you have a good organizational system so you can take that income you're making and turn that into assets. Broadcasting live from our Columbia, Maryland headquarters, they are founders of Hard Money Bankers, REI 360, and are international bestsellers with their book, The White Board. Here are Chris Haddon and Jason Balin. Hey everyone, Chris Haddon, Jason Balin here in our office in Columbia, Maryland with our last show of 2016, and we are discussing today rethinking what your business is really for. So even if you're not a business owner, it's really not a big deal. Uh, the purpose of this topic I that we're going to be talking about is really building income and with that income acquiring assets. So if you're a business owner, great. If you're a W2 employee, great. doesn't matter where you work. As long as you have a steady flow of income, this will apply to you. For sure. Yeah, this came up uh, a couple months ago, this topic, and we've discussed this in different ways, but we, we really clarified some stuff here. I was hanging out with a friend of mine. He owns a law firm. We were working out one day. Uh, we were running on the track and taking breaks and talking business as we do weekly. Um, you know, it's really productive, both workout time and business time. So what we were talking about in his law firm is not to think of yourself every day as getting up and going to do lawyer stuff, but you're getting up and running a business whose purpose is to generate income that is going to go into assets to grow assets. And that yeah. is really applies to everyone, the most simple way to look at it all. And it clarified a lot of stuff for us. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter where your income's coming from. And that kind of goes to the whole point where we opened with is it doesn't matter if you're a business owner or you have a W-2 job or if you make hourly wages, whatever that, that money is. I mean, th think about it. Let's say you just graduate college and you start, or high school, and you just started making money. What are you making money for? What are you saving for? So you're putting money away, and typically it's to buy a house, let's say, right? What is a house? A house is an asset. And a lot of the times a house is probably the biggest asset that anyone acquires, right? That's, yeah. their, ba that's their biggest investment. So you're saving money, you're saving money, you're putting $1,000 away, $10,000 away, whatever the case is, and you're putting money on, on a down payment for a house that you're, that you're acquiring. That's why you're, you're working. You're using your income that you're bringing in from work to pay your monthly bills, and whatever you can, you're setting some aside to acquire an asset, acquire a house. Another example similar to that is, you know, what do you contribute to out of your, your paycheck every day? It's typically like a 401k, right? Sure. That maybe your employee matches, maybe it doesn't match. It yep. doesn't really matter if you know if they if they match it great. If they don't, they don't. That's not really the purpose of it. It's just to save money uh, for assets and then for obviously retirement, right? So you have that money toward retirement. So it doesn't really matter, you know, the the mechanism or the structure you have this set up with. And really, it doesn't even matter how much money you make. The the purpose of it is you take a little sliver of it away and you invest that into an asset over time. Yeah, so like I've said before, like insert business here. <laughs> you can have a salary job, or you can be a lawyer, or a title company, or run a lending company, or whatever it may be. It's just an income generating machine, you know? It takes work, it takes systems, it takes whatever. It's still the same thing. So kind of think of whatever you get up and do in that way. And the purpose of what you're doing is obviously to live. And you feed yeah. your family, and you pay the mortgage, and whatever. And you divert a certain amount of money to different assets. And I think that's. That's an important part of it. The, uh, another thing we've been talking about recently is that I don't think that human, humans and their psychology can ever positively affect finance. Finance is good on its own. What we need to do is take the human part out of it, right? Because if it comes in your personal checking account, you're gonna blow it, you're gonna, you know, it's just humans and money kind of don't mix, unfortunately. So if you take the human element out and put in some automation type stuff, like for example, a great one that so many people have used and employers have been pushing it forever is, the 401k coming out of the payroll and going directly there. Yeah. If it, you think anybody would build any kind of money if it had to come through your personal no, account? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen. Much less. And and you know, going back to a few things that you, you, you talked about, a lot of people are like, well, you know, I need in order for me to save money or in order for me to do some of those things, I need to make make money, make more money. But that's not necessarily the case. I mean, nobody's saying you have to save thousands and thousands of dollars a month. It can be ten dollars a month. It could be a hundred dollars a month. The purpose of it is to do it on a consistent basis, and it adds up. And for any of you who have heard me personally speak related to uh, you know, a 529 college savings plan. You know, my kid's seven now, my, young, my oldest is seven now, and I contribute $209 per month. That's not breaking the bank, really, for many people, 200 bucks a month, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, close to thirty, forty thousand $40,000 in that account for over the last seven years. Do you think I would save 
you know, $40,000 or be able to strike a check for $40,000, you know, seven years later just like that? Probably not. But because it was yeah, done in it. small increments over time, and that's just automated. one. Yeah, yeah, automated over time, then that worked. It automatically ACH'd out of my account 200 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And you know you, you wake up and, and that happens. So there's a lot of different exam there's a lot of different examples for that. But I think the key point of what we're really trying to get across is you got to figure out a way to organize it so it doesn't just hit your checking account or it doesn't just kind of get mixed mixed in. You know we we've talked about how your home or your business operating account is like and is the same as like similar to your home operating account. As soon as it hits hits that account, it's just going to get washed up with your day to day activities. It's like, cool, I've got five hundred bucks in my account, and I'm going to get paid, you know, this week, and then it's going to replenish again, and I'm going to replenish again, and it's going to replenish again. I'm just going to spend all the money that that I have. But if there's a system or, or a way to organize in order to, you know, put money towards this, put little money towards this, put a little bit money towards this. You know, you wake up in a year or ten years or twenty years, and yeah, you're in a real. really good spot. It gets real, and yeah, I think what the most simple tool, and there's a number of them, but just different things that can auto debit, whether it's a personal checking account or a business checking account. Another one I played around with is the app called Acorns, which just takes out a few hundred bucks a month, and it's just investing it in a stock portfolio that was picked based on the information I put in. Pretty simple, not a huge snowball for me, but it, it you know, it's a thing, and I'll look at the balance, and I'm like, huh. Yeah, I mean you. Something. Yeah, right. and I mean this can be built out as basic or advanced as you need to. And mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong, if you are saving money to buy a house and then you buy a house and then you're putting money set aside to your 401k and that's all you're doing, that's very impressive and that's very very good and that grows a lot. You know, we were talking with a buddy of ours who works for the government and he contributes the max that he can every year, and he felt like he didn't have a lot of money and he said he had a few hundred thousand dollars saved in there from from working for fifty from 15 years, I was like, you know how much money that is? That is a ton of money that you don't even realize is missed because it's yeah. just coming out yeah. every year. So yeah, the, the, ba the basics are obviously buy a house, contribute to your 401k. Like that is, that's the basics and that's extremely impressive as long as that's done kind of on a regular basis because the, yeah. the purpose of this is just don't do it when. And there's nobody that can just all of a sudden wake up and say, hey, I'm just gonna stroke a check for a few hundred thousand dollars and buy a, buy a house. I mean, it's, it's the things that they did in the past that is adding money on a regular basis right. in order, order for them to do that. And then if you want, you can really take this to a much advanced level. I mean, we're in a good spot being real active real estate investors and a lot of our audiences as well because real estate is, a, is an asset. You know, we're fortunate to understand that as a whole. Right. Um, but investing in real estate is just one particular asset. It doesn't matter what you're investing in. Like you said, it could be a stock portfolio. Sure. It could be some sort of retirement funds. It can be a business. It can be anything. But the important part of it is to make sure you're doing this on a consistent basis, on an organized basis, and you're disciplined so no matter what, you're putting that amount of money into these different buckets on a regular basis. Yeah, and in order to do that, go back to the beginning, like we said, and rethink what your profession is for. Obviously, it's for being good at what you do, for being a good doctor, for being a good marketer, for being good whatever. But it's also just a very simple income generator to build assets. Exactly. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm really curious to know what you're do what you're doing uh, related to this topic to make sure you're staying organized. Comment below. We've actually done a few other videos, uh, Private Money Minute, and a few other articles that we've written similar to this, and we had really good feedback. I was surprised that there was a lot of people that said, "Hey, I use my my W-2 income for this, and then uh, you know for to pay all my bills, and then all the stuff I do actively on the side of wholesaling real estate and flipping houses and things like that, I'm using to to grow for the future." Grow for the future, which is a great, great, great way, way to great way to you know to to separate the two. So again, really curious to see what you're doing. If you could uh, provide feedback for, for the team, uh, for the community, that that'll be helpful. There's a lot of uh, followers that we have. There are real estate investors and agents, but also that are just small business owners, at, or they're looking to kind of get into starting a business. So it'd be very helpful for them. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Jason and Chris, see you guys see next time. time. See you next year.